some chicks, some chicks. Wow. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. Some chicks, some chicks. One. One, 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 one. Welcome Classic Rock fans to another episode of Classic Gig Review. I must admit I'm really enjoying these little videos as they're pretty relaxed and unscripted. Well, apart from a, a few notes I've got written down. And, you know, at a time when we're all shut in and locked down, what a better opportunity is there than to take a wander down memory lane. Now, this particular memory is of a gig that took place on the 12th of June 1997 and it uh, was the Peter Green Splinter Group and they were playing live at the Reading Alley Cat. Anyway, before we begin talking about the actual gig, I'd like to preface it with uh, uh, an admission that I loved Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac. I used to have a, I think it was a best of CD, it had a reddish cover, I played that to death and then later on brought, there was a box set of albums which I, which I had. So, you know, we used to listen to these uh, songs all the time. And of course then Peter Green was this mysterious nomadic a uh, figure that had just wandered off somewhere. I had no idea where he was. I remember actually seeing in the, I think it was a Daily Mirror or Sun, or one of those tabloids, there was a picture of him like the wild man of Borneo. He had uh, been caught in public, had these fingernails that were out here and long straggly hair. And uh, looking at that picture made me realize that, well, we're not really gonna see this guy do anything musically very soon. Anyway, a few years down the road, I was working in a photographic processing plant. Uh, we used to handle true print and all that mail order stuff. And I heard, I don't know how I heard, whether somebody had told me or I read it in a magazine or read it somewhere, that Peter Green was playing the Reading Alley Cat. Now, the Alley Cat was a little club, which I, I don't even know if it still exists. It's probably not there anymore, but it was a small club. And I, but I just cannot believe that he was playing this. I remember phoning a friend of mine and obviously I didn't really have to ask, do you want to go? It was, a, it was pretty much a given. So I went home, went to town, bought tickets. They were the days when you actually had to turn up at box office, you know, go to a box office or uh, send a check off for a ticket. And you just ended up sitting wherever you were sat. But uh, anyway, I went to the box office, bought the ticket. And later on, we went along to the gig. Anyway, at the actual gig, um, what I can remember is uh, over after getting over my initial being starstruck actually seeing Peter Green stood there with his guitar is uh, just a thrill, a surge of joy a flow through me when they went, started, they opened with the chords of Green Man Alishi and there were a lot of wonderful songs from that set list. I, I, can't, I can't find the set list anywhere so I'm just going by memory but I remember they did, uh, I think they did Need Your Love So Bad I think, I'm sure I know they did Albatross and uh, Rattlesnake Shake, The Stumble and other bits and pieces and it was a, a wonderful night i mean it's true to say that uh, he he wasn't as forceful on stage he didn't have the confidence or the the power that he once had when he, he played in the 60s but nevertheless it was just wonderful to see him on stage holding a guitar and playing again and of course you had cozy powell on drums and it was you know cozy, cozy powell just playing along to albatross and stuff like that a drummer i'd associated with bad, with all sorts of uh uh, degrees of heaviness was now it, it just to me it revealed what a, a versatile and nuanced drummer he really was I thought he was fabulous anyway after the gig a friend of mine spoke to Cozy Powell and, and Cozy Powell told him how difficult it, it had been working with Peter Green I'm, I'm not sure why I, I, I know he had uh, psychological issues maybe he was referring to that I don't know but uh, I went backstage, uh, you know, there was no security there, it was such a tiny venue. I just went backstage and I took with me two photograph wallets because I worked at the aforementioned photographic processing place. They had these card wallets which I turned inside out so they were white card with the, uh, with the objective of getting an autograph. And I thought about all the wonderful questions I could ask him uh, about albums and ideas and things like that. But the only thing I could think of at the time was do you still hear from Mick Fleetwood? And what a, what a naff question that is. But anyway, he kindly signed an autograph for my friend. I don't know if he still has it. And he signed an autograph for me, which I went away and got it framed with a picture, I think it was from Kerrang! magazine. And I've managed to fish it down from my attic. 
and there it is look we have um, the, the ticket of course which I think it says actually 5th of June 1997 I don't know if I said 12th of June at the beginning of the video but I was wrong the picture is I think it's from Kerrang magazine and there is the autograph now the autograph says uh, to Barry from Peter Greenbaum so he signs his full name I don't know if that uh, shows up there at all and there we go that's it what a wonderful wonderful memory of seeing a unique and talented artist anyway I hope you're all locked down keeping safe enjoying these videos enjoying listening to some great music and uh, what do I usually say oh that's it click like subscribe check out the Facebook page but more importantly please do keep listening